Hello all, welcome back to predictive analytics regression and classification course. We are going to talk about predictive analytics regression and classification for lecture 14 and in this lecture we are going to talk about today natural exponential family. So natural exponential family is a class of distributions. Suppose you have a bunch of random variables y1, y2, yn, they are independent observations and yi has a density of the form something called natural exponential family and this family, this density of which can be cast into this functional form. And I'll talk about uh, what is uh, what is this functional form and how can we cast into this form. Now, question is why should we study natural exponential family? Why we want to study natural exponential family? So, if you look into any data set, any data set, okay, and this data set will have uh, different kinds of variables, okay. So, bunch of different variables and pretty much you can classify these variables into certain categories. First category will be a bunch of continuous variable, continuous variables, variables, then second category will be bunch of uh, discrete variable or discrete discrete binary variable like 0 1 kind of thing and then and third will be count variable okay count variables okay so continuous variables will be like you know income okay and maybe height some measures some it is it will it is going to measure something that is a feature of typically if you if a variable is coming out of a measurement then it is typically a continuous variable if it's a, like some kind of action decision here i'm going north or south i'm going to go going or not yes no then it comes a binary or discrete 0 1 kind of variable and sometimes it is if it is um, count variable then like you know if you if the variable is coming out of counting process number of you know tumor number of goals or something like that you know or number of courses you want to take something like that so now typically how can you model income height this pop continuous variable the models that uh, the, the 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 ones which models the continuous variable they are typically like uh, gaussian distribution gaussian distribution then there are gamma distributions gamma distributions then there are log gaussian distributions so bunch of distributions comes into this play. For binary or discrete, you have typically Bernoulli distributions or typically we call it binomial family of distribution, binomial family of distributions and the count variables typically we model with either Poisson distributions Poisson distributions, negative binomial distributions. So these are the typical popular distributions which are we use to model the count variables. Okay. The fourth category, there is a fourth category I would say uh, called multi-class or multi-level variables, multi-class or multi level distribution 
multi-level variables okay now what is the example of multi-class or multi-level variables suppose you want to you are asking your subject is it a bad or average or good service okay so some kind of multi-level variable a multi-class variable or how was the performance of a student is it a grade is it a b grade is it a c grade is it a d grade so how what is the performance of a student right so grade could be a multi-level variable okay so for that kind of variable we can have a interesting distribution called multinomial distribution okay so we call it multi nomial distribution okay now these all these distribution gaussian gamma bernoulli binomial poisson negative binomial multinomial distribution these all these distributions falls in the big family of exponential class of family so if we can if we can build a model a predictive model where for exponential class of family then automatically all other models will become a special case for this model and that is where natural exponential family is going to play a very crucial role okay so the first model i'm going to talk about binomial distributions suppose y1 y2 y n are binomial distribution with some m and theta i okay now that means my distribution is f of y i theta i m choose m c y i theta i to the power y i 1 minus theta i to the power m minus y i now i can write this this is the simple pmf of binomial distribution i can write the same bmf in a slightly differently i can write it as theta to the power theta by 1 minus theta to the power y i and 1 minus theta times to the power m now you see this part does not involve any y okay and then this entire thing i can raise to e to the power log so i can write a p as e to the power log p i can write it in this way so i can write this guy as e to the power log of the entire thing and then log of theta 1 minus theta to the power y 1 minus theta to the power m this entire thing i can write as log of y times log of theta 1 minus theta plus m times log of 1 minus theta okay and then if i have a minus y here e to the power this is like this then you can write it in this way so then you can write this part as h of y this part as eta theta i and this part as psi theta i so you can put this in this format now if you go back this binomial distribution function the pmf of binomial distribution function can be formed in this kind of cast into the natural exponential family with each part has its own functional form okay now next you see if you poisson distribution if you see poisson distribution similarly you can write poisson this is the pmf of poisson distribution okay pmf of poisson 
distribution and I can write it in this format and this log theta is my eta theta, this yi is my t of y, psi theta is, this theta is my psi of theta and 1 over y is my h of y. So now this I can write it as a, I can say that Poisson, Poisson distribution is a spatial is a special case of natural exponential family class of distributions. Similarly, you can choose normal distribution. Suppose normal theta y1, y2, yn follow normal theta i sigma square where sigma square is known. I'm just taking it as, you know. And then you can write, this is the PDF of normal distribution, PDF of Gaussian or normal distribution. You can take the PDF and you can write it in this format, okay. And then H of Y, this guy is my H of Y, theta I is this, Y I is this and theta i square by 2 sigma square, there must be sigma square, is my psi theta i. So, I can now say Gaussian distribution is a special, special case of normal uh, natural exponential family of distributions. So now if I build a predictive model based on natural exponential family that will be called general that it will be called generalized linear models and this will work for any kind of response if your response is binary the, if your response is continuous and if your response is count, everything will work. Hmm, that's an interesting point. If your response is binary, then it must be a classification problem. So if your response is binary, then it is a classification problem, right? Then it's a binary classification problem. And if your response is continuous, then it's a regression problem, correct? We knew so far in machine learning they treat separately, but in statistics they all fall into the same problem, class of problem called generalized linear model because binary and uh, binary classification and regression they all fall in the same class of natural exponential family hence any predictive model based on the natural exponential family will be simply called as generalized linear models okay so now what we are doing is very simple we have a random component yi we call the generally generalized linear model will have three components, random component, link function and systematic component. So yi follows some distribution natural exponential family and link function. So this eta theta i is typically called the canonical form, canonical form, canonical form, eta theta i equal to z i and z i equal to x i transpose beta. That's how we write the uh, generalized linear model. And sometimes we just simply write it in this way, eta equal to x i transpose beta, okay? Now, regression with GLM is simply, you just say y equal to normal theta i sigma square, and then theta i equal to x i transpose beta. It's, it's called identity link identity link simple very simple that's how a simple regression works in 
GLM framework. So regression, simple regression is special case of simple regression. Simple regression is special case of GLM. Okay. Now count regression. All you have to do that okay y follow points of theta i then you write it in this format and that okay then eta theta i is log theta i so we just say log theta i equal to xi transpose beta that's it so count regression or Poisson regression is also special case of glm or generalized linear model Poisson regression is also special case of GLM then classification binary classification well if a y i follow bino bin binomial 1 theta i or Bernoulli theta then you can write it in this format and this is your canonical form so log theta i by 1 th by theta i equal to xi transpose beta and damn i simple binary classification is now binary classification fication is special case of glm okay So now all you have to do, you can define each function of the natural exponential family separate. Okay, like when I'm, you go back to the natural exponential family, the way you define it. So hy, eta theta, ty and psi theta, each of them you define as a separate form, separate function in your program okay now if you just go here come here and define it as a negative log likelihood in that and then where theta i equal to eta inverse xi transpose beta and then just optimize it and you get the beta hat mle that's it so the implementation is very simple in glm uh, in r there is a stats packet glm and you call family as Gaussian link equal to identity if it is a classification problem with logistic regression then we call family equal to binomial with logit link if it is Poisson regression you call Poisson with log link if it is Julia in Julia there is a GLM package our CR Rao packages also can handle all three models uh, with this we will stop here and we will do some hands-on with GLM thank you very much see you soon